Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request this time from Mark. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for episodes 7 and 8 of the Dynasty, the New England Patriots documentary series. It's a 10 part one. I reviewed the first six thanks to Mark and his generous his generosity. And let's get into it. Episode 7, we get into Deflate Gate. Which I always heard about that. Even for a guy that didn't know much about football, I even heard about that. But I never really understood it. And in a weird way, after watches, I still don't really understand the big deal with it. So... Well, okay, first off, the owner, Robert Kraft... And then Rupert Murdoch is interviewed, weirdly enough. And they tell this story, which I don't really know why this story is in there. It's kind of a, it's kind of a funny story, but at the same time, it's about Robert Kraft being an ambassador, going to Russia, talking with Putin, Putin, and Putin, when Robert Kraft showed his Super Bowl ring, Putin looked at it, then put it in his pocket, then left. There's their kerfuffle. And then Robert Kraft's like, this guy just stole my Super Bowl ring. And then apparently the government said, you know what, just, you know, say it was a gift. You know, don't, don't cause a war over it. I mean, it's kind of a funny story, but it just find it weird as part of the dynasty of the Patriots, you skip over Super Bowl win two, you skip over Super Bowl win three. I think you could have even more propped the point of it's been about 10 years since you won a Super Bowl, and something about like that 10 year gap, that 10 year drought of women not winning a Super Bowl, give or take to you. Like, how people felt about that, how the fans felt about that. But you don't go into any of those, but you go into Putin stole your Super Bowl ring. I thought that was a bit weird. Like, if you had the other stuff... Uh, and also, I heard... I reviewed another... Oh, uh, the, the previous one about the, the guy who killed someone... I, I was asking how come Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski wasn't asked about it because this was a teammate. So I think some of the comments said they were. And for some reason it was cut out. If that's the case, what the fuck? What? So I, I am enjoying this. I love the way it's edited. I love the presentation as a football noob. It's a lot of information I didn't know. It definitely made me appreciate Tom Brady a lot more because I would hear all these people on the outside like, oh, Tom Brady sucks, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm not into football, so I have no side. But it really made me like and respect Tom Brady by the end of this because I did watch 9 and 10 as well since Mark sent a request for that. That will be in the next video. But it really made me respect and like Tom Brady. And he seems like a nice guy. And then to find out that his wife... It wasn't this, but... His wife cheated on him. And then divorced him. And now it's like, oh... Well, uh, he he wanted... He concentrated on work. Oh, so he wasn't a bum living off you. He actually needed to work and... To pay your fucking bills. Shame on him. I guess he should have been a bum. <laughs> God. Vapid. But anyway. But it's very well... I love the way this whole documentary series has been edited. Very well edited. Great presentation. Interesting use of songs in this episode 7. All Eyes on Me. Talking about how the people keep looking at the Patriots... Granted, I'm still sitting there going, well, it's been 10 years since you have, you've won a Super Bowl. I, I figured that would be part of the conversation, but it wasn't. 
Instead, it gets to them face off against the Colts. Pass gets intercepted. Apparently, the Colts, people in the Colts thought that Patriots were cheating. And so when they died, they felt that the ball was a bit deflated. And then the, the cinema shitstorm erupted. Where... Lies came about. 11 of the 12 footballs were under inflated. And then much later on in the program, they go, oh, by the way, that was a false report. It wasn't 11 of the 12. And in fact, if you go with a lot of people, their balls were, well, <laughs> their ball, we're all our balls are deflated with the way the world is today. Their footballs were deflated or there are quarterbacks that will, like, put stuff on the footballs. I'm like, yeah, they do that with baseballs as well. Like, baseballs, they'll put, like, stuff on it and or grease or whatever. So what is the bid for? Like, if all everybody else does it, what's the bid deal? At least they do go into that a bit later on, which I appreciate. I will say this made me hate this coach, Bilicek. He seems like a grumpy ass some bitch sourpuss. When he's being interviewed, half the questions he doesn't answer. Or he gives the most bold. I don't know why the team thinks that way. You don't have to ask them. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he gives the worst answers. He gives the worst interviews. He seems like a cranky sourpuss. Uh, no wonder. I, If you ask each of the player, like, be honest, it's between us, they probably like, the coach sucks. They, Tom Brady doesn't really talk, want to talk much about it. I think that was a mistake for Tom. Because this, this is your point, like, be pissed off, be angry, say, you know what, screw those guys, you know, they... Be on, you know, just unleash. But he didn't want to do that. But I thought it was, that was a mistake. Other players said that Tom Brady said, this is not something I would do. He was bawling his eyes out in front of us. But then there was word that maybe one of the ball boys might have done it. Like they went to a bathroom. Then the thing is, there's never, there's no concrete answer as to what happened. That was a bit annoying. But I guess, you know, if no one wants to admit it, and there's no concrete proof, what more can you do, right? But yeah, no, there is no concrete answer as to what happened. But they do talk about Super Bowl 49 versus the Seahawks. They do give credit to Malcolm Butler, a cornerback who's a rookie, makes a crazy interception, which helps them win that their fourth Super Bowl ring. Uh, Super Bowl ring. And even though they won the Super Bowl, the flight day was still going. My favorite part is seeing some people like Ben Affleck uh, just being mad about it. You know, Deflate is the bold, ultimate bullshit outrage. If blah, 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 is a witch hunt. And then Matt Damon and none of you are going, yeah, you know, Ben, he was, he was pretty animated. And Bill Burr, which is like Bill Burr. It was, I wish we could have seen him more in this. Because he's a really funny guy. And as a fan, he would definitely bring insight to it. I think it would have been nice to get Ben Affleck for a new interview. I mean, that would have been cool to have. You can't tell me he wouldn't have done it. He seems gun ho to do this. At least pertaining for football and Tom Brady, he would do it. But I have to find that clip that Ben Affleck went just completely <laughs> pissed. I have to find that clip now. But, uh,. But I like Ben Affleck, and I, I liked his enthusiasm, so that was funny. And this was touched upon, but I wish they would have delved a lot more into this. 
whereas maybe somebody some looked at it as a smoke screen to hide at the time there was domestic abuse going on throughout the NFL there was labor issues going on with the NFL so in order to hide these more serious things football players dealing with domestic abuse, uh, domestic abuse and labor issues well we'll, we'll uh, center on this one and take the edge away from the other more important stuff and i like that you know some of the news programs are like is this really the head story like hey you know this one guy got you know this official got grabbed by terrorists but yes let's hone in on deflate gate but on the flip side like some of the people mentioned it was it helped with the ratings it helped with the ratings and that's what happens with the news a lot. Still happens to this day. The more important stuff is like the fourth one mentioned, but the the dumbest stuff will be the number one. If it gets the eyes, if it bleeds, it leads. If it gets the eyes, it gets the attention. So yeah, I also thought it was weird that the Put the Putin story would be at the beginning of this episode. I don't know why. It just seemed random. But it didn't. Nice to see a bit of the highlights of Super Bowl 49. Malcolm Butler seems like a nice guy and him getting some love. I see Ben Affleck get a bit pissed. I yeah, I wish there was a new interview with him. It was interesting to hear a little bit more about it, to understand it a little bit more. But yeah, the at the end of the day, it seems like such a stupid thing. I mean, again, some of the stuff said was false. Uh, there's even like a kid. Like, I, I did like the bit when the the more and more of the crowd was like, "Free Tom Brady, free Tom Brady." The crowd of Patriots are getting behind their guy. Like one of the kids, they like a project. Like it'd be the weather. Which, I mean, the weather does affect equipment like that, and people don't realize it. Especially very cold weather. Which, New England has a little bit of coldness to there. But yeah, it just... The whole thing seemed like a whole ridiculous bit of stupidity to me. As an outsider, I'm like, who gives a shit? I bet every football team has done worse stuff of that. But number uh, episode eight. So episode seven, I didn't mind. It was interesting to watch. Episode eight, score to settle. This is probably one of my favorite episodes. The Tao Tai says it all. Tom Brady did his revenge. Uh, they mentioned the 2014 draft and Jimmy Garoppolo is brought in as a a drafted as a quarterback and on the one hand you get that the coach Belichick he's won this guy possibility to be the new the future quarterback while Robert Kraft the owner and Tom Brady are like hey I did keep going until I'm in my mid 40s I said the coach Belichick comes off as absolutely awful in this documentary. Awful. Just like a complete, utter asshole. They show footage from back in 1995 where Tom Brady was in Michigan. He was always a player that was overlooked. I did like the interview of Tom Brady where he mentions, you know, this year... Look at what you made me do. F.E.A. And even the interviewer is like, what does that mean? Fuck them all. It was going to be the year of fuck them all. <laughs> F.E.A. I did like that. I thought that was pretty cool. That's probably perhaps my favorite line in the movie so far. I mean, movie. The documentary series so far. 
And Super Bowl 51, they're doing well. They play against the Falcons. It's 28 and 3. They did one of the best comebacks in football history. This also has one of my other favorite lines from someone who was with the Falcons on the staff going, everyone's celebrating, but he stared and like, what, what are you stare of? Number 12, Tom Brady, is Freddy F. Intruder. And he's going to take some of us out. I just hope he doesn't take all of us out. <laughs> And then lo and behold, makes the crazy comeback. They win the Super Bowl with the best comeback ever. And he's the first quarterback to win five Super Bowls. Because <clears throat> there are people like Joe Montana for the 49ers. He won four Super Bowls. I'm sure there's been others, but not many have won five. <clears throat> but also it was this bit where... Bill Bill uh, Billichek is just treating the team and treating Tom Brady like shit. As one of the p players said, "We worked for Bill Billichek, well, but we played for Tom." Well, I said it, it gives me respect for Tom Brady. Makes me feel bad for what he was going through. Uh, Robert Kraft, I think he should have got more into what was going on. And I think Bilicek is a completely overrated guy. I don't know. Who is horrible in interviews. He's horrible at press conferences. And he just comes off looking like a dumbass, honestly. But, like I say, it was... Seeing Tom Brady get his revenge and all that after he had to serve his couple game suspension. You see that, okay, you don't have this Jimmy Garoppolo guy try to replace me. I'm going to show you what I can do. Because revenge is sweet. So I would say so far episode 8 is my favorite. Uh, I did quite like that. <laughs> But thanks for watching, take care, and, and soon I'll talk about the last two episodes, season uh, episodes 9 and 10. I'm a bit sad this is going to come to an end because, again, as a guy that really doesn't talk much about sports because I just never have the opportunity to watch it, but by living vicariously because of the documentary, it's been fun because I don't really get, Sally, I don't, Sally, I don't really get much requests for sports stuff, but... It's been a nice change of pace, so to Mark, I really appreciate it. It's been very fun. So next time, it'll be episodes 9 and 10. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.